All right, let's get going then. So we're going to carry on talking about complexity. I started talking about it on Tuesday, and I want to get a little bit more into more detail about complexity and some of the issues that um, we need to think about when we're thinking about complexity of different kinds of algorithms. So when we're talking about algorithms, when we're comparing algorithms, um, there's some rules that we need to think about to start with. And so the first rule is that the input is always going to be bigger than zero. So n, our input size, always has to be bigger than zero. It doesn't actually make sense to have a negative input for complexity, thinking about complexity. Um, and so we always just assume complexity is larger than zero. And in addition, one of our rules is that functions, let's say they do more work for more input. Okay, so if I have more things, if I'm providing more things, then it's got to do more work. It, I, you can imagine an algorithm where if you provide more input, it does less work, but that's not how most algorithms work. Right? And that's not how we work when we're thinking about computer science. Generally, we think about if there's more things to do, it's going to take us a longer amount of time to do it. So we tend to think that functions, um, they do more work for more input. And I'll talk a little bit more about um, what I mean by more work as we go through. We're going to drop all constants. So if we have an algorithm, for example, that is 3n, then we say that that algorithm is the same as an algorithm that is n. The 3 doesn't matter. It can be 5n, 10n, 50n, or more. And all of those have the same complexity, which is complexity of n. Okay. So we ignore constants. They're just scaling factors. If we're considering an algorithm, for example, that's 5n compared to an algorithm that's n squared, it doesn't matter if it's 5n, 50n, 500n, the n squared algorithm is always going to be a lot worse. So we ignore the constants um, in there. We also only consider big numbers. So if we, for example, if I plot um, two different functions here. So in my plots, I always have n increasing on the x-axis. And I have work or time, generally, increasing on the y-axis. It can be time, but work could also be, for example, the amount of memory it, an algorithm takes. It could be the amount of hard drive space that it takes. There's a bunch of different ways that you could do it. Generally, when we're talking about algorithms, we think about the amount of time something takes. Um, so if we have n increasing in time, here's an, an algorithm. This um, algorithm increases with n. So as n increases, the amount of time it takes uh, to do the algorithm increases linearly in response. Here's a second algorithm that increases with n squared. So we've got two algorithms, n and n squared. What's this point right here? Or rather, what is this value? Oops, there's the answer. And what is this value? It's 1, right? So this is 1, and this is 1. When n, squared, when n is 1, n squared is 1, and that's the point when n squared and n cross. In algorithms, we don't care about things less than 1. We don't care about the small things, OK? We care about the really big things. We care about it as n increases towards infinity down over here. That's what we're interested in. Doing work for one process isn't that hard. Handling 150 students all taking 310 is a lot more work. So we worry about as n approaches infinity. And as I mentioned on Tuesday, 
um, we ignore the lower order terms. And so if we have some function that involves different orders, for example, we might have a function that has n cubed plus n squared plus n plus a constant. The n, the constant, and the n squared don't really contribute to the complexity of that algorithm, the complexity of that function. The only thing that's really important as n approaches infinity is the n cubed part of the algorithm. So we can just ignore lower order terms, and we say that this basically is an n cubed algorithm. And I'll talk about how we say that formally in a moment. For logs, we ignore the base of logs. So if I, for example, um, for example, if I uh, print out the answer of math dot log of two, what answer do I get in Java? Do you guys know what that what what base that log is in? It's not 10, it's not 1, it's base 2. No, it's not base 2, sorry. It's not base 2. Yes, exactly. This is the natural log of 2. Okay. And so if you want to compare between logs, how do you do that? So, uh, convert between logs. If I want to get the log of 2 in base 10 in Java, but I've only got the natural log of two. How do I get? How do I convert that to get the log of two in base ten? Exactly. You take the natural log and you divide it by the log of the base that you want to convert to. Okay. So all logs are related and they're just scaled. And so when we're talking about complexity, we don't care about the base. We drop the base, we just say that it's a log algorithm, log n algorithm, which means that when you're doing some comparisons, as we'll see in a minute, you can just use the base that, you're, that makes the calculation the easiest. Okay. Um, the last point is that we're gonna use the equal sign in a way that drives mathematicians wild which is a bonus. And so um, I'll explain exactly what I mean by this in just a second. But if we say, for example, um, 2 to the n is equal to big O of n, I'll explain what the big O means in a minute. What we actually mean is that 2 to the n is a member of the set of functions that work as big O of n. Sorry, 2n is a member of the set of functions big N. We use equals to mean is a member of the set of. So now we have a mechanism for talking about different algorithms. And over the course of data structures this semester, we're going to see a whole bunch of different kinds of algorithms. So for example, we're going to run into um, constant time, which we either use the number one or the letter C to indicate. And that's like the example that I showed on last Tuesday, where you just have a single calculation that you're trying to do. And it is independent of N. So that's a constant time. We're going to have a series of algorithms, and this is going to come up later in the class when we talk about things like sorts and trees. We're going to have a series of algorithms that have log n complexity. And log is usually when you divide things in a half, 
or you multiply things by two. So if you have a for loop, and in the for loop as it goes through, it divides it in half or it multiplies by two, that's a log complexity. In fact, that's log base two complexity. If you divide by 10 or multiply by 10, that's log base 10 complexity. We ignore the base, we just say it's log n complexity. So anything involving trees, for example, will typically be log n complexity. We have n complexity, which is where you do something once per item. If you iterate through a list, for example, if you're going through a linked list, that's n complexity. And we have n squared complexity, which is when, for example, you're comparing everything to itself. So for example, if you do a sort algorithm really ineffectively, if you do something like the bubble sort, the bubble sort algorithm is n squared complexity. It's really um, a bad way to do things. There are much better sorting algorithms that we'll talk about that don't require n squared complexity. Um, but oftentimes, um, it, with real world data, that's something that you run into. And then if you're doing graph theory, you'll run into things like the traveling salesperson problem, where you have somebody that has to visit a whole bunch of cities and they can only go to each city once, they're not allowed to go back through, other, back through cities multiple times, and how do you find the shortest route for that person to visit all of the cities? And so the traveling salesperson problem um, is typically an n factorial problem. Okay. So we've got different kinds of algorithms that we're gonna um, talk about over the course of the semester. And we'll see these come up again. At the beginning of the semester, we're going to focus mostly on um, algorithms that are complexity of n or complexity of 1. But then as we get towards the end of the semester, we're talking about um, sorts. In particular, we'll look at different kinds of n squareds and things like that.